Hello. We're live on every platform now on Instagram and hello on Facebook and on YouTube. So you may join us at any of those platforms to join our live Q&A with our Korean language student at Dongguk today. Hello everyone on Instagram and see some people on Facebook and YouTube as well. For those of you who don't know, my name is Nathan. I'm the International Student Coordinator for Google Hanguk. And today is Monday afternoon. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon. And today is a bit foggy, <laughs> but otherwise the temperature is not bad. It's getting warmer as we approach summer, which will then be hot and humid, <laughs> which we're not looking forward to at all as we never look forward to every year. So hope the uh, weather in your country is good as we approach summer or winter if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. And we'll start out as usual with some reminders. If you'd like to join us here during the fall, the deadline is coming up in June or July, depending on the school. So be sure to email us your documents very soon. And for those that are still looking at study trips, we still have some study trips open as well. Hello, good morning. For those of you, it's morning. <laughs> and uh, you can find those on studytrip.com. Some of them still have the open application. And otherwise, we just opened up the information for our 2021 trips as well for the spring and first summer and youth trip. So you can check out those trips as well. And if you have any questions about the study trips or the upcoming term or the fall, just let me know during the stream. We're happy to answer those questions as well. Uh, otherwise, I will introduce our guest for today. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a student from Hanyang University that joined us for the Q&A. And today we're very happy to welcome a student that's studying at Hongguk University, which is where we are now. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Hongguk University uh, is our newest language school partner. And they're actually uh, founded as a Buddhist university, but you don't have to be Buddhist to study here. Uh, however, that's like kind of their special quality. Um, so you may see like uh, Buddhist monks walking around yeah, campus. Nice. And uh, actually I saw one walking into the subway station while I was uh, coming out. So, um, and right now uh, we're still kind of close to when Buddha's birthday is. So you may see like lanterns and a uh, temple on campus. So that's kind of like the special uh, quality of Thongguk University. Oh, and for our study trips, we have ones that are for youth ages 14 to 17. And then we also have ones that are for adults. So you have to be 18 years or older. So you can check out like the age requirement per trip. The youth trips are specifically labeled as such. So those are for 14 to 17 year olds. And then the other trips are all for adults ages 18 years or older. So we'll get into uh, introducing our guests today. Uh, and then we can go through our questions for him. And also, of course, feel free to ask any questions uh, during the live stream. We'll be happy to answer those for you as well. So thank you for joining us today. I think it'll we can try to fit both of you well, fit both of us in there. I'll point this one to you, I, I guess. I'm also here. <laughs> Otherwise, you can see both of us in a widescreen format on Facebook and YouTube. Um, but I'll try to dip in here every now and then. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. thanks for joining us. Would you mind introducing yourself, yeah, uh, just like your first name and where you're from? And we already mentioned you're studying at home. My name's Cody. I'm 21 years old and I'm from the UK. Great. And let's see, Ding. Oh, yeah, just about our study trips. Uh, yeah, we welcome anyone to apply. So when you're old enough in 2021, we welcome you to join our trips. And thanks, Cody, for joining us today. And can you talk about uh, why you decided, decided to study uh, Korean language? I've gone to Korea a few times before, uh, twice. And each time I came here, I really enjoyed it. I, I just felt like I wanted to invest some time into the country, either work, study, 
But I thought, obviously, the main thing about living in a different country is you need to know the language. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to get by. I mean, some people speak English, but it's it's not like other countries where they uh, they learn it in school, but you you actually use it a lot more English when you're in like Europe, for example, or other countries. So yeah, to be honest, I haven't got a very specific reason why I've chose to come from uh, come to Korea. I just really like this country out of all the other places I've been, and yeah. Thanks for sharing. Someone says, sounds like you're from up north in the UK. <laughs> They're from Manchester. Hello from hello to Manchester. <laughs> from Coventry. I've had lots of people from the UK. Are there lots of people? Um, mm, I honestly yeah. I haven't noticed many English I've probably met two English people from a whole time being in Korea. Been here for like almost three months now. So but there's a lot of uh I've noticed there's a lot of French people and Italians here that compared to like other Asian countries. Yeah, I've also noticed there's like a large French community, mm. uh, at least in Seoul. I'm not sure about all of Korea, but yeah, yeah definitely in Seoul, there's a large French yeah. community. So if you're from uh, European countries, you can of course uh, find other people that maybe you can speak your native language <laughs> with if you yeah. are uh, wanting to speak yeah. <laughs> your native language rather than English or uh, <laughs> Korean. And let's see. Um, so you've been in class for how many months now? Maybe a couple. About three months. A couple months. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people are curious about like what nationalities are represented in like a typical Korean language class. So can you maybe talk about like what nationalities are represented, like how your class is made up? I say about eighty percent of the class are Chinese. Um, the rest are like uh, Vietnamese, um, who else is in there? There's one guy from Mexico, and yeah, it's pretty much it, mainly Chinese people. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree that overall most language schools have the majority, like these days it's Chinese and Vietnamese. Mm. It used to be a lot of Chinese and Japanese students. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure when the big shift made was made, but a lot of Southeast Asian students started to, to come study Korean um, in addition to like the a Chinese majority. Um, so if you're curious about like who might be in your class, that's a pretty fair assessment, I think, regardless of kind of where you study, which yeah. school you go to. Yeah. And oh, hello from Spain over on YouTube. <laughs> and Oh, how long are you going to be studying here in Korea? Uh, for one year. So, yeah, and there are four terms in a year. So right now we're finishing up the spring term and then there's like basically a term per season. So we'll have summer and fall and winter. So if you are like Cody and you start during the spring, then you can spend like pretty much the whole year into early next year uh, studying Korean. If you'd like to study for a year, do you think it would be easier to learn Korean if I knew French? Um, Maybe not. I mean, if you're coming from a European language background, like, you know, a Latin language or like English or something, I think it's probably very similar. Like yeah. it'd be just as challenging or yeah. maybe maybe not depending on like how many other languages you've studied. Um, since Korean, like the grammar is very different from many Western languages, especially like English yeah. or other like Latin based languages. So I don't know if knowing French necessarily will make it any easier for you or not. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> if you, yeah, if you knew, if you knew something like uh, Chinese or Japanese, then you probably have a good base of vocabulary or grammar, since Japanese and Korean grammar is very similar. But uh, in terms of other Western languages, I'm not sure if it's necessarily an advantage or not. Um, oh, we can talk about the process. Can you talk about? Like the process of applying and how Boko Hanguk also helped you with preparing your documentation and things like that. Yeah, well, um, it, Nathan helped me through emails a lot. So whenever I had like a question or anything, I just uh, ask him. But on the website, Go Go Hanguk website, you can go down to like the bottom of the page, and they talk about all the schools and like the levels 
and just give you a bit of information about it. And you can do your own research as well as, as to what, what school you want to go to. But there's just a, an application on the bottom of the page. And it's pretty simple. You just fill out like basic details. And then afterwards, uh, a member from Google Hangout will uh, email you. And then from there, they'll tell you like what you need to start doing. And yeah, it's fairly, fairly, they make it very easy, to be honest. If I was to do it on my own, I'd probably may have quite a few uh, mess ups, but yeah, they've been a great help. Glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we try to make the process as simple as easy as possible. There are like many different steps and many different documents to prepare, but as long as you can complete those steps and complete those documents, then it's uh, not too difficult. It'll just take some time and um, some obviously effort on your part if you have to fill out application forms or collect certain documents. But other than that, we're more than happy to help you. Oh, that's a good question. What what level, I guess, are you in Korean currently? <laughs> it's really hard. I mean, writing and is is quite. I'm I'm okay at that, but speaking off the top of my head, trying to have conversations and stuff, it's hard. As to what level I am, I'm still, I don't know. Still working on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm still working on it. I'm a beginner, I guess. And if, and if you're curious about like uh, levels in language school, you can take a placement test if you have some background in Korean and to see like where you're going to be placed or if you don't want to be in the very beginning. Otherwise, you can just start from the beginning and learn the language from the very beginning from learning the alphabet and, you know, of course, learning the basic grammar and sentence structure and things. So even if you don't know any Korean, you can still study at Korean language school. Uh, from YouTube, is it easy to move around, I guess, Korea uh, without speaking Korean? Uh, what do you What do you think? Move around places. Yeah. Uh, well, in Seoul, the subway is pretty. It, honestly, it's really easy. You can download an app on your phone called Kakao Metro, and it's it makes it very simplified. So. I'd say moving around in Seoul is fairly easy. The buses are also easy because you can just go on uh, your phones, download like Naver Maps or Google Maps, and they tell you like what bus to take and what time they come. Yeah, it's, it's really easy. And a lot of the signage is in English and sometimes in multiple languages, Chinese and Japanese too. So even like street signs and such, they're all normally in English and Korean at minimum. So yeah. it's not too difficult if you don't speak Korean, maybe if you at least know some English, then it'll make it a lot easier if you know absolutely like no Korean when you come. Uh, does the university help you find part-time jobs? Um, it can depend on the university. Um, I'm not specifically sure about Dongguk, but uh, also, you have to wait a little bit of time before you qualify to find part-time work. So if you are more curious about that, then just you can contact us and we can give you more details about that. Um, and also, you have to maintain like high attendance and like good grades in language school before you can get permission to work. So if that's something you're interested in, just uh, contact us and we can help you out. Um, someone asked about budget. Um, in general, it, I mean, of course, it'll depend on your spending habits, but in general, we tell students to budget around the equivalent of US $10,000 per six months. So if you want to study for a year, maybe, you know, 15 to 20,000 US dollars, because you're not only paying for tuition, but you need to pay for accommodations and your flight and things like visa fees. And, um, you know, you're probably going to want to use your mobile phone when you're here and public transportation and, of course, food. So um, all of those things you should think about when you're budgeting for Korea, not just the cost of tuition. And of course, maybe you're gonna wanna shop or travel or do things for fun as well. So you wanna also, of course, budget for some pocket money uh, for things like that. So if you have more questions about the budget or cost of living, then you can check out our YouTube channel, which we've posted videos about, um, or just contact us if you have something specific that you're wondering about. Of course, the flight cost will depend on like when and where you're flying from. Um, but other than that, that's like the general budget amount you should think about. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's a good question. How different is living in Korea compared to where you're living in the UK? I'd say 
maybe for me it's like the sheer size of the city like i'm not used to living in a, a really big city culture difference it's, it's a lot of things different as well like the food and i'd say uh friends as well i guess for some people it could be quite hard to find friends um but if you honestly if you if you go out and uh go to like bars clubs or whatever you should be able to make friends obviously now you can't really do that much or because of the coronavirus but i've had up into korea a few times before so i made friends then and making friends with people from different countries uh i haven't really made any of the foreign friends maybe i think i've got like one friend who's a foreigner but most of them are all just koreans which um, you're probably going to make korean friends in a sense everyone's pretty much korean <laughs> <laughs> yeah and of course since you're in korean language school it's a good opportunity to practice korean uh if you can go out and meet you know koreans and have them to practice your, your language and you know exchange your cultures with this, with them as well because well there are more koreans traveling abroad and studying abroad these days still like i think koreans are generally curious about you know other countries and cultures and of course they're learning other languages too not just english but um you know other languages uh so even if you don't speak English, then don't worry. I'm sure you can find a Korean friend that wants to learn French or Italian or Spanish yeah. or anything like that. Um, I know some of my Korean friends, like they're learning German or they're learning, you know, Arabic or things like that too. So um, it's definitely an opportunity. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we can, if you want to talk about your accommodations. Um, while there are dormitories, at Dongguk, as well as other universities we partner with, um, you can of course live off campus too. So, uh, I used to live in a ghost one, which is like similar to a dorm, but really small. But um, yeah, because it's really small and I'm quite tall as well, I, it's really uh, quite uncomfortable for me. So, luckily, I have my uh, Korean friend helped me uh, find a place to rent. So she uh, looks on like estate agents and stuff. And we, she took me, took me out to have a look at some homes and stuff. So yeah, now I live in Shindae Bank, which is like near Shilling. But um, yeah, yeah, it's a lot, a lot better there about right, renting. If you can somehow like find a place to rent, I'd recommend that. And yeah, yeah. For those of you who aren't familiar, that's like in the southwest part of town. So. Um, but you can really, if you're studying in Seoul, like there's a bunch of different neighborhoods, so you can kind of shop around and check out what part of town you'd like or what's in your budget or not. So, um, and if you are interested in like some other options for accommodation, then you can contact us and we can kind of consult with you what might be within your budget or things like that. So um, also, if you want to live in the dorm, that's perfectly fine too. We can help you find a room there as well. Let's see, I think we answered everyone's questions that were there. Oh, yeah. For some of you, maybe it's very late. So, <laughs> yeah, we try to uh, we try to pick different times for the live stream to accommodate everyone's schedule. But obviously, some people uh, this time might be better than for others. Uh, let's see. Uh, some people are curious about how much time you may have to spend outside of class for, say, doing homework or studying. So can you talk a little bit about that? Well, every, every time you finish your class, they give you uh, homework, and it's like five pages. Oh, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's laid out quite spacious. Okay, so it's, so it's not like single space yeah, five it's, pages. Yeah, it's, it's not as bad as it sounds, but... Um, yeah, typically I was just doing homework and that refreshes like everything I've learned on that day. So to be honest, you don't really need to like, do much more studying afterwards as long as you just do the, the uh, yeah, as long as you do the homework, you should be fine. And after each week, you would have covered like four chapters of like, grammar and stuff like that. Oh, wow. And then after that, 
you have another piece of homework which basically reviews everything you've learned in that week so that, that one takes a bit longer to do than the others but it, you should do this it. yeah it's good yeah i think that's similar to other schools you partner with too you'll have some sort of daily worksheets or something like that and then of course uh reviewing like your grammar reviewing your vocabulary um, either through that homework or just on your own. Um, some people like to make flashcards or use apps on their phone um, to review the vocabulary and grammar and, and things like that. But you should take some time after class to review and make sure that you're keeping up because it is a fast pace. Like you said, if you're covering like four chapters worth in one week, it's it's a pretty brisk pace. And, that, and that's the same for our, our other partner schools as well. Um, is the nightlife different than compared to the UK? Yes, but yeah. <laughs> let's see. Me, me personally, I've, obviously, music's subjective, but a few places I've been to, like, the music's like, kind of so so. <laughs> like, but there's still, it, there's, uh, there's still good places to go out, and but yeah, yeah, a nightclub's a nightclub, I guess, and here it's. Typically, all nightclubs in the UK, uh, there's a lot more like raves and like musical events, I presume. Uh, yeah, I say like the music here is mainly like EDM and hip hop. That's like the main like uh, genres of music that I play. But regarding like other stuff, like bars and stuff, like I really enjoy the bars here and, and the drinking culture that Korea has. Like, so do you and yeah when koreans drink they, they can be very fun <laughs> yeah i think that's what a lot of people read about on the internet or see videos about is like the korean drinking culture so if you're of age then go out and meet some people and and have a good time because it's yeah it's it can be unique when compared to other countries even like the states too um someone asked about the Buddhist aspect of Tonguk. Um, it's a it's a Buddhist university, but you don't have to uh, be Buddhist to study here. Um, just like if you go to like say uh, a Catholic university, like I don't know, you don't have to be Catholic to study there. But yeah, it was founded as a as a Buddhist school. So um, but I don't know. Have you visited like any temples or anything like that while you've been in Korea? Uh, the last time, a few times I came, I went to a few temples and stuff. But... I don't remember the names. <laughs> yeah, there are there are temples uh, in Seoul too, which you can visit. Um, and if you are Buddhist, then of course you're welcome to worship at those temples as well. Um, otherwise, you know, similar to like uh, Christian cathedrals or something, they welcome guests, which you can of course like tra uh, travel around the grounds and such like that. So if that's something you're interested in, um, you can even do like a temple stay where you could stay overnight at a temple and kind of go through like a, a day as what the, the temple monks would do. Um, so I've done that personally, just to experience like that kind of uh, mm -hmm. life, since it's of course different than your day-to-day -day life that you'd have otherwise. And um, the food is actually really good. Like, I think, I don't know if all temples are necessarily vegan, but they're definitely vegetarian. Um, so the temple food is normally like a uh, special cuisine for Korean uh, in terms of that type of Korean cuisine. So, um, and a lot of it is either grown or prepared like there on site. So a lot of temples will have gardens or um, places where they'll make their own sauces and things like that. So it's all pretty like wholesome, healthy food for you. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, then you can definitely experience that in Korea. What's the minimum age? Um, so if you wanna study at like say Dongguk as uh, your program at a university pro language program, then you'll need to be 18 years old or older and at least a high school graduate. And I know that high school graduate may mean different things in different countries. So just contact us and, and let us know, um, depending on like what your education or educational level is. Um, Cause I know some countries have a really complex education system like Germany, for example. Um, so, if you have any questions about that, then then just let me know. I'm more than happy to talk to you about like what the requirement would be. And if you've at least finished like 
um, school like up to 18 years old, then you're more than likely perfectly fine. If you finish it up to like say 16 years old, then just uh, let me know um, and I can help you with the process. Uh, someone asked about doing a study trip first. Um, it's kind of up to you. Like Cody mentioned he's visited Korea before. Um, so what do you think? Do you think someone yeah. should just jump feet first into the deep yeah, end well, or? Well, actually, I went to Japan for four months to study. Go okay. To Nihon before. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I, just, I just jumped in. I've never been there before, but I'd say I had a really good experience and I learned a lot of things, just like life lessons as well. Like when you're living on your own and stuff, you, you, you have to sort of grow up a bit more, you know what I mean? But yeah, you could go for the three week study trip, but if you really like Korea, like anyway, then I'll just go for three months because whenever I came to Korea, if I came for like one month and three weeks, I always wanted to like stay. Like I didn't want to go home. So <laughs> yeah, you might regret the three weeks. So <laughs> probably going to miss this place. Yeah. They might have to kick you out because they don't want to leave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, in terms of like how many people just jump right in or do a study trip first, I'd, I'd say most people that are considering like long-term study here have, have kind of thought about it and like are more or less committed yeah. to doing it. Yeah. So uh, mo most people that do a study trip, it's because they don't have as much time or maybe their budget is, has limited um, them in terms of how long they can study or maybe they can, they want to just do it as a, during their summer break, maybe they're still a full-time student or they're working or something like that. But otherwise, most people are, they're pretty committed. They know they want to do it. So they, they jump feet first into the deep end, so to speak, and stay here for six months or a year or three months. So um, yeah, it's, it's really up to you. How much would you say is the total cost, uh, including living expenses? Um, I mentioned that before, like, of course, it's going to depend kind of on your own spending habits, but I would budget like the equivalent of US $10,000 for six months. And then you can kind of scale that if you want to study longer. Uh, oh, that's a good question. Um, how much free time do you normally have in comparison to like time you'd save for studying and then after yeah. that? Studying about five hours a day of study, then the rest I can, you know, just have free time and do what I want to do. Simply in the week, I'll either just meet my friends for dinner and chat or go to like a PC bank or play games. Then over the weekends, typically I'll meet my friends in Ilson and then we'll go out and have some drinks and stuff. But yeah, if a lot of Koreans, they, they, the motive to have fun, go out, is probably you're going to be drinking a lot. So. <laughs> yeah. Of course, it'll like depend on like how, uh, what, like what level you are in and then how well you're kind of picking up the language. Um, for some people, maybe it's more challenging to study and for others, maybe you pick it up really quickly. So it's uh, up to you, but yeah, I'd say, yeah, if you're studying five, six hours a day, then pretty much the rest is up to you and you can do what you want. Um, have you been to the Lake Park up in Ilsan? That's a popular place. Lake Park? Yeah. Is it near outside oh, Chiu? Oh, it's near Tungbarsan Station? Uh, no, okay, not. that's a place to visit <laughs> if you haven't been out there yet. Yeah, but yeah, and for those of you who wonder, like, yes, Seoul's a big city, and the province around Seoul is also big. But there are like some green spaces around, like there's Seoul Forest, and there's other parks in Seoul as well. So um, don't think you have to be surrounded by like concrete every all the time. Um, oh, I think I missed a question somewhere. Oh, we got the free time one. Uh, oh, a typical day. So I guess you are, or have a question about like the typical, yeah, typical day, um, like you wake up, you go to class, and can you talk about? Yeah, that? I wake up, typically I always go to the convenience store and I'll get some food or something, because I'm terrible at cooking. So <laughs> uh, yeah, then I'll go back, have a shower, get ready for my day. Then I'll go to school at about 10 a.m. Then I finish at two. And then after I'll, either meet my friends at somewhere or we'll, we'll check out some restaurants and go to cafes, um, play some games, PC bank. I can really like PC banks. So for me, that's 
what I typically do in the week. And um, yeah, typical day. But on the weekend, normally I'll I'll just go out and have some drinks with some friends. Cool. And for me, like I work full time, so <laughs> my day is is not always as exciting. Um, <laughs> But yeah, mo most of the time I am helping all of you live and study in Korea, uh, helping process applications or helping with visa questions and things like that. And if you're meeting Korean friends that are like full-time workers, um, some of them may have to work very late depending on what their job is. And that's uh, kind of been like the norm for Korea, but they're trying to reduce like the amount of overtime people have to work. and because typically Koreans work like the most and like they're like one of the top countries and like the OECD countries for working hours per week. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to reduce that and get the work-life balance um, kind of back even rather than work taking up so much of your time. Um, but yeah, so if you have Korean friends, they may have a lot of hours they devote to working, but hopefully on the weekends, at least you'll have some t free time you can spend with them if, if not during the week. Uh, yeah, so Cody mentioned earlier about the homework that he gets. Um, so for example, you may get worksheets or you may have a workbook or you may just have to study your grammar and vocabulary on your own as well. If you're on a budget, do you advise looking for a Goshiwan or is the door more affordable? Um, it can depend, like uh, for the dormitories, they're probably one of the most affordable options. Otherwise, then the Goshiwan is definitely also an affordable option. Uh, I think it also depends, like, do you want to live alone? Do you want to have a roommate? Do you want to live close to campus? Do you want to live on campus so you can just roll out of bed and, and walk straight to your building? Um, do you want to live in a different part of town but still, like, have a, an affordable accommodation? So, and we can help you kind of talk through that depending, like, on all those different aspects. Um, I know some people want to live in like popular areas in Seoul, so they want to live at Hongdae or Shincheon or Gangnam or somewhere like that. Other people don't care, so they want to live like right next to campus so they can just roll out of bed and have a five minute walk to class or 10 minute walk. So it's really up to you. Um, and also the dorms are priced normally per term or like for a certain amount of time, more than like month to month, like a Goshiwan might be priced. So uh, that could also factor into your decision but we're more than happy to talk through that process with you. Uh, over on Facebook, someone asked about the age of studying. Yeah, there's no like upper age limit for studying. So as long as you're 18 years old or older, then you're welcome to study. And if you wanna do something like learn more specific Korean vocabulary for business or something like that, um, then maybe contact us and let us know specifically what you're looking for. Uh, otherwise, like the main Korean language programs are going to build you like a great foundation for maybe other specific purposes you have for either business or academia. So if you want to like study kind of advanced Korean, you can still come to language school and take the placement test. Maybe you already know some Korean and see where you want to go from there. Let's see other questions. Um, Has there been any, I guess someone's mentioning like discrimination due to COVID-19 and such. Um, I personally haven't felt discriminated against. I'm American, but I'm ethnically Korean, but I don't know. Do you think that, do you feel any prejudice in Korea due to the current situation? Not really, no. really probably wouldn't be paying attention for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't think it's something you necessarily have to worry a lot about. Um, I mean, I've done interviews with a bunch of different students that we have that come through us um, and they haven't mentioned like they feel like they're being discriminated or, have, or that Koreans have some prejudice against them just because they're a foreigner or, you know, they're ethnically different than Koreans. Um, and of course, you may run into that, but um, the vast majority of people, I don't think, feel that they're going to be discriminated against just because they're not Korean or because they don't speak Korean. Um, and if you did decide to study here and experience something like that, then of course, tell us immediately. Um, and it, if you're, it's not being addressed by your school or, or something like that, then of course, let us know um, if that's something you're concerned with. 
let's see. Oh, I think we mentioned our names earlier, but um, I'm Nathan. I'm the international student coordinator for Google Hanguk and and this is Cody. So yeah, sorry, we hadn't mentioned our names for a little bit. Uh, we've been streaming now for 35, 36 minutes. So we'll probably uh, go for a little longer here, depending on our questions that we're getting and such. So feel free to still leave them on any of our channels, Facebook or YouTube or Instagram. And, oh, that's a good question. Uh, why did you choose to study at Tonguk University for Korean language? Basically, I heard uh, a lot about the, the book because they have their own language book that they made themselves. So you, you, you get supplied with that. But that's probably the main, main thing that persuaded me because all of the universe is teaching Korean. I feel like they're all pretty good. So yeah, for me, it was, it was quite an easy decision because I thought no matter which one I chose, I'd, I'd probably be happy with that because I'm easy to be pleased, you know. But the book's really good and that's probably one of my favourite things about it. Is it. It's laid out very simple for you to understand and get the hang of the grammar. So, yeah. Yeah, I haven't actually looked at the book very much myself, so that's good to hear about <laughs> their textbook. Most language schools do have their own textbook. Um, depending on like where you study, some schools may use another school's textbook. Um, so, uh, but a lot of the bigger schools have developed their own curriculum and therefore their own textbook. Uh, some also have like workbooks or other separate like vocabulary or grammar books as well. So um, if you have questions about that, then just uh, you can contact us and, and ask us. But yeah, Tonguk uses their own textbooks and curriculum. Yeah, um, if during, if you do feel like uh, any discrimination or things like that, then of course, co you know, contact authorities or if it's something at school, then of course, let us know if your uh, school staff isn't addressing it properly. Um, of course, like, you know, not every, every country is 100% perfect uh, ideal. So, um, but overall, in terms of like your, your health and uh, things like that, uh, Korea has been doing a pretty good job with managing like the COVID-19 in general. Um, they're testing a lot of people. I think the latest figure I saw was they're testing, they tested like 100 or sorry, 826,000 people or something like that. And for such a small country, like that's an amazing number. I think that they've been able to test so many, so many people. And and yeah, um, I still would encourage you to study Korean. Um, all the language schools are still open. Um, you can still study here in Korea as long as you're, you know, permitted to travel and feel safe to do so. So and as I mentioned earlier, we're still accepting applications. So um, if you have any other concerns, and just please contact us directly and we can like talk through anything like that um, and address, of course, all your questions and concerns. We, of course, want you to feel safe and, uh, you know, of course, feel that the environment is uh, good for you to study. Uh, no, you don't have to know Korean to study at Korean language school. You can start from like the very beginning, from learning the alphabet, from learning Hangul. So uh, if you don't know any Korean, if you're just uh, really interested in Korea and Korean culture, then, you know, don't feel afraid to go ahead and apply. Um, you can jump right in and start. Uh, you don't have to worry about like knowing anything. It's helpful to know a little bit of Korean uh, before you start, but it's not necessary. Um, and it's not like a deterrent. Don't think that just because you don't know any Korean, you, you can't come to language school. Um, that's what language school of course is for, is to learn the language. So, uh, feel free to apply even if you haven't uh, learned how to read Korean or you know you don't know the sentence structure, that's perfectly fine. Uh, Korean language school will definitely prepare you for, for that. And if you wanna learn Korean, like someone mentioned earlier, maybe for business or something like that, then Korean language school is a great way to build a good foundation. And then you can take it with you into academia or work or you, know, you wanna tell your friends about it, you wanna teach Korean to other people, then yeah, that's great you can take the Korean language skills you learn in language school to 
other aspects of your life. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's as yeah as we just mentioned, it's helpful to know maybe some basics, but it's not necessary. So when I started learning Korean, I knew like almost nothing. So I maybe knew some of the letters in the alphabet, but that was about it. So yeah, don't feel deterred if you don't know any Korean. Feel free to apply or do a study trip, something short term. If you want to just test the waters, then that's perfectly fine as well. Let's see. Um, I, I also have for, I'm looking at a list of questions because we have some other like frequently asked questions uh, that we get from you all. So we wanted to cover those as well. Oh, we have another question on Instagram here. Um, so yeah, right now there is like the quarantine rule that maybe you've heard about uh, for traveling to Korea. Uh, however, it's kind of hard to speculate on that for like three months out when you may be coming here for fall. So uh, if you have any questions about that, then, then just let me know. Um, otherwise, then I would apply as if the quarantine isn't like uh, gonna affect you. Uh, right now, Korea is still, as we mentioned, uh, managing it pretty well, and imported cases are still happening, but they're like very low, you know, less than 10 or like a couple um, per day. So if you're able to travel, then I would apply and we can kind of guide you if the policy changes or not. And overall, the quarantine is for everyone's safety since there's still many cases happening outside of Korea, in South America, in Europe, in you know North America as well, in other countries. So um, that's why they implemented the quarantine procedure to try to catch the any imported cases as soon as possible. So uh, a lot of people have been asking about the fall and if they'll have to be quarantined or not. And to be honest, it's hard to speculate on if the policy will be the same during the fall, but uh, we can keep you updated um, hopefully they'll make some sort of update to the policy during June, but it's going to be really up to like immigration and Korea's, Korea's government on how they assess the whole situation and how Korea's doing. Because um, also school children started going back to school this past week. So that of course will impact like how they assess what the public health uh, situation will be going forward into June. So we'll try to keep you as updated as possible with that on our blog as well. So we have a couple blog articles that address that. Let's see. Oh, for those that are thinking about coming to Korea, um, besides maybe familiarizing yourself with Korean language, do you have any other advice for them? I'd say you try and make some friends or like applications or something before you come. Because sometimes it can be hard to, to like meet Korean friends just out walking around and stuff because I guess they're not as open as in other countries. Um, but on the weekends, say like Hongdae or Itaewon or somewhere, and you, everyone's typically drunk there. So it's, 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 <laughs> it's having very, a good time. <laughs> yeah, it's very easy just to go up and have a conversation. You probably make a lot of friends like that. But yeah, I'd say for me, most one of the most important things was trying to have friends, you know, so yeah. So yeah, there are, like Cody said, there are a lot of like different apps you can use, like language or learning apps and other things like that, where you can practice your language skills and meet other people that are studying yeah. your native language. And then if you're studying their native language, so um, yeah. In this day and age, it's fairly easy to maybe meet some people in advance. So then you have like a point of contact when you actually get to Korea and um, can kind of hit the ground running. What grades is a high school diploma for UK students? Um, a lot of schools will accept if you've gotten, I think it's your GCSEs. Yeah, GCSEs. Um, yeah. So, but if you have something different, something higher or lower, then just let me know and we can kind of assess the situation for you. Um, but yeah, I would at least have your uh, GCSEs. 
which if you're from the UK, you probably know what that means. If you're not, then you probably don't. But um, yeah, if you're asking about the UK, then yeah, those would those are would be good. If you have something higher than that, then that then that's also fine. If you have like your A levels done, um, if you have oh yeah, if you yeah, if you went to university or college or things like that, that's that's also fine. As long as you're at least 18 years old and at least have your GCSEs done, then you're probably good to go. It can depend on the school though. So yeah, it, it's best just to contact me and let me know what you what you have. But we've been working with the schools a long time and they, they're kind of familiar with like the different education systems depending on the country. So if you're yeah, if you're from the UK or if you're from Germany or, or wherever you're from. For the US, it's kind of simple. You get a diploma after you're done with high school and, and that's kind of it. So <laughs> but I know for other countries it's it can vary. Um, the education system can give you like many different paths after a certain age. So um, in the US, it's it's not as varied, but yeah, in the UK or other countries, then it can be a variety of different ways you can go. So, but don't worry, we can help you out. Uh, let's see. Um, what do you think is like the hardest part about Korean language learning for you? Well, for me, it's just simply remembering everything. <laughs> Honestly, it's simple as that. I, I can understand everything. Like that's not like too difficult. If you just focus on it, you'll understand it all. The uh, problem I face is afterwards, I just forget everything. So. Mm. Yeah. Attention. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So yeah, the hardest part is remembering it all. Because you learn but at Dongguk, they teach us a lot of like actual useful useful stuff, but it's hard to remember it all. And I say also, because obviously they teach us formal Korean. And when, say if you're with your Korean friends, that it's always, they always talk in like informal. So mm. it's, it's kind of hard to like understand what they're saying. But say like when my friend translates something, I'd know how to say that. And understand it in formal Korean, but because it's informal, it's it's a bit difficult. Mm. Yeah, and I I think some of that you just have to yeah have Korean friends and kind of yeah, be out and about yeah, and just listen just and expose yourself. Yeah, so. get get the exposure. But yeah, re retention is always going to be um, a tough thing in any language you learn. So um, for me, it was also difficult, but I mean. For some of it, it's just, yeah, rote memorization. You just have to drill yourself. Um, and other times, you know, maybe you make some system of remembering it, you know, people learn in different ways. So that's just as important, like when you're learning the language to find like the way that's best for you. If you're a visual learner or you have to write it down a lot, you know, muscle memory or, you know, making flashcards, all those things, um, you can find like what's best for you because obviously like not everyone is going to learn the exact same way. So, yeah. I think for me, besides just retaining it all, it's probably like, for example, in English, maybe there's just one way to say something, but in Korean, there may be like eight ways to say it. Like, especially, you know, um, joining sentences together and um, saying just, uh, because or so something happened yeah. like there's a lot of ways in korean to say that but in english we just say because or so blah 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 but in korean there's many different ways you can conjugate uh verbs or like even adjectives to say that same meaning so for me those things were very difficult to kind of wrap my head around and remember um so also in korean you can write a very large paragraph with almost no punctuation because of the different ways you can connect phrases together based on, you know, different conjugations and things like that. So um, knowing like the right way to, to connect, connect all the phrases in a sentence and then make it, you know, sound like something comprehensible, <laughs> that can also be difficult once you start writing like long compositions, um, that can be challenging. Uh, and then the same thing for Korean speakers when they learn, say, English, you know, they may have a huge paragraph or run on sentences because they're not used to having to put so much punctuation, you know, commas and periods and other things like that. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we have about like five to 10 minutes left. So 
Again, I'm Nathan, and this is Cody. We're talking about Dongguk University's program and living and studying in Korea. Um, we've been streaming for about 50 minutes, so if uh, you have any other questions or comments for Cody, be sure to leave them soon. And of course, you can watch the replay on YouTube and Facebook. If I have an accident or something where I have to go to the doctor or hospital, do I automatically get treated? Um, so you'll probably get treated, but in terms of your insurance, like actually Dongguk is great because the insurance is covered under their tuition. Uh, other schools, you may have to pay for it, or you can come with your own country's insurance if it also covers you outside of your home country. So um, if you have specific questions about that, then just let me know. But otherwise, like Dongguk is nice in that they include some insurance coverage within your tuition costs. So, um, but yeah, if you, need in, uh, health insurance coverage, then you can just ask me and we can give you more details about that. Uh, for me, I pay for national health insurance. So um, that covers a lot. It doesn't cover everything. So you may still want like private insurance coverage, even if you have something like the national health insurance in Korea. And actually for like language students, I think um, from next year sometime, uh, you can actually buy the national health insurance if you want, but um, it does cost money. It's not like completely free. So, but you can let us know if you're interested in that. Let's see. Oh, yeah, Cody a answered uh, why he picked Dongguk earlier, um, but would you like to review that again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, I, uh, I had a lot of good things about Dongguk and also about their own book they have. And I thought, I, think, I felt like, because obviously uh, universities in Korea, all of them are pretty good. So I thought it's going to be hard to, like, to choose wrong, really. And so I thought, for me, like, I need stuff to be very like, simplified and so I could understand it, otherwise I just overthink things. But I had good things about their book and that's probably one of my favorite things about Dongguk is the is the book I really enjoy. It's really simple and like the homework's simple as well because it's all laid out. It's all matches with what you've learned. Um, but yeah, that's, I'm a simple dude, but that's that's why because of a book. Yeah, and if, I would say, like I mentioned earlier, um, most university programs will have their own textbook. Uh, some do use other schools' textbooks, depending on if they've developed their own curriculum or not. Um, where I went, they also used their own textbook, and they also included a workbook and some writing activities. Um, depending on your level, maybe you have like you'll have like a, a composition book where you have different writing prompts and you can practice writing. Um, others, you may have like say a separate grammar book or something like that. So if, it can vary depending on where you study. Um, but for Dongguk, they have developed their own cur curriculum in addition to their textbook. So another aspect of Dongguk that you can consider when studying here. Um, let's see. I think we covered everyone else's questions here. Um, if you have any other things, uh, we're probably gonna wrap up the stream soon. So be sure to leave your questions or comments. If you think of something afterwards, then don't worry. You can still comment on the videos on Facebook or YouTube. And Instagram, as many of you know, the video will disappear, I think, after 24 hours. So um, just make sure that uh, if you do want to watch it again, visit our YouTube or Facebook page for that. And let's see, maybe we'll have time for like one more question here. Let me pick out a frequently asked one here. Um, oh, good one is... Um, like how has, I guess, learning about Korea and Korean language kind of impacted your life or what are your future plans with the language, if any, other than just being able to speak Korean and uh, have Korean like, friends? <laughs> I feel like I, I took into consideration the last few times I came here, I was thinking if I could possibly live here in the future, like would I be able to call this like, feel like home at some point? And I feel like... That's something that I, I would like. Maybe I could. So I'd have UK and Korea be like my two homes, if you know what I mean. 
but how it's changed my life is i guess it's, it's it's hard to to like put it into words and explain but when you actually come here and then you start to realize just how different it like this country is to your own uh home countries and i feel like having that experience and understanding like how people live differently in life is probably i say quite valuable but that's that's why probably what's changed my yeah cool thanks for hearing <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh you can watch the replay if you missed the video and yes cody's from the uk <laughs> Yeah, you can watch the, re yeah, as I mentioned, you can watch the replay and you can catch the whole uh, interview um, since we're at like the tail end right now. So, yep. Sorry, Zoe, you missed the beginning, but thanks for joining here, here at the tail end. We appreciate the view. Yeah, I think we'll wrap it up here soon. Um, thanks again for joining us yeah, and nice. answering these questions. Um, I'm glad we helped you here living yeah, in Korea and studying at Donggu. Yeah. And we can, of course, help all of you too. Um, just send us a message or email and we can walk you through the whole process. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, there may be a lot of steps and it may take some time, but overall, uh, you, you can get it done. Um, you know, if I can do it, if Cody can do it, anyone can do it. Um, and as long as you have that um, dedication, then you can definitely make it happen. Um, let's see. Oh, is it fun for is it fun for British people to study in Korea? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, how was your flight? Was it uh, long? <laughs> yeah, it was long. I hate planes. Yeah, depending on where you fly from, of course, yeah. it may take you many many hours to fly here. But um, yeah. It's only, I mean, if you're going to be living and studying here, you only have to take a really, yeah. really long flight, maybe yeah, once, once, and then it's going to be a long time until your next really long flight. Yeah, you, that yeah. you can put that on the shelf for a little bit. But yeah, um, I think we'll wrap it up here. Um, again, catch the replay on YouTube or Facebook, and you can, of course, watch it on Instagram um, for the next 24 hours until the story goes away. And, oh, well, they're asking you specifically about airports, but... <laughs> uh, I'll say... Uh... Heathrow, like from Heathrow, they typically have like Korean air, which is pretty good. You get free noodles. So. Yeah. yeah, depending on where you fly from, of course, check out the routes that are available. But yeah, if you're flying from Heathrow, then yeah, I think they normally have a lot of different yeah. itineraries you can pick from. You can fly from Bangor as well. Like, and I know there's they have one goes to Korea and it stops off. You have a changeover in Amsterdam. Then from there you can come to Korea. But typically the price is, I think, okay for that KTX or something. It's called. I'm not sure. I mean, it's through KLM. Your friends KLM yeah. from the from the Netherlands oh, over to yeah, Korea. Yeah. So yeah, there's a bunch of different routes. Yeah. I mean, if you pick any like big international yeah, airport, you Sky Scanner. Yeah, you can find you can find a route for you. Yeah, I also use Sky Scanner too. Yeah. So even if you're from from the US, yeah, Skyscanner or, you know, any of your Orbitz, Expedia or any of those is fine. So, already, I think we'll call it a day here. And uh, it's about almost 5 p.m. here in Korea. And thank you so much for either staying up late or getting up early and joining the stream. Um, I think uh, we'll, of course, let you know about our next live stream and you can catch, of course, other interviews with students on our social media for our other schools. And um, again, any other questions or concerns you think about, feel free to message us. Otherwise, we will see you in the next one. And thanks again for coming. And Instagram is telling us they're kicking us off soon, so we'll wrap it up here. So bye-bye, everybody, on see YouTube ya. and Instagram and Facebook. We will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>